Hi, everyone. Hi. Ray, on page 596 of In Search of Christian Freedom, takes up the subhead, Superior Cleanness and Unity? Question mark. And he starts with Philip's modern English translation of 2 Corinthians 10, verse 12. Of course, we shouldn't dare include ourselves in the same class as those who write their own testimonials. All they are doing, of course, is to measure themselves by their own standards or by comparisons within their own circle. And that doesn't make for accurate estimation. Ray comments, the morality level found among Jehovah's Witnesses is unquestionably much higher than in the world as a whole. I believe that on the basis of my own experience among them over many decades. The question is whether the moral level is so exceptionally high and the incidence of misdeeds so remarkably low as to fit the concept of a spiritual paradise, one without equal anywhere else. What is said here, then, represents no attempt whatsoever to downgrade or minimize the good record of witnesses for law-keeping or morality when contrasted with people in general, nor is it a case of damning with faint praise. The purpose is solely to consider whether that record is so notably superior as to justify the Watchtower organization's own depiction of itself as a virtual island of morality, distinctive and superior, to all other religions. The standards of judging that the organization uses in such a recommendation of itself deserve examination. An illusionary picture can be created by a very selective use of experiences and expressions. Out of a hundred experiences, 95 might be negative, but if only the five positive, one, positive ones are made known, it is possible to create a very favorable impression. It is also a false impression. The reverse is likewise true, where a few negative factors are publicized and the more numerous favorable ones are suppressed, thus creating an equally false impression. It would be wrong to assess the witness organization by either such method. It would also be wrong for the witness organization to assess other religions on the basis of such methods. What does the evidence show? It would be extremely difficult to find any favorable statements about any religion other than their own in the publications of the Watchtower Society, at least from the 1920s forward. By contrast, anything unfavorable about another belief system as, for example, acts of immorality, dishonesty, or of other wrongdoing, become material worthy of consideration for inclusion in their publications. The more unfavorable it is, the more likely it's being included. Whether the incident or circumstance or attitude is actually representative of the religious affiliation as a whole does not seem to be of concern. This critical standard is applied to all other religions. A very different standard, one virtually opposite, is applied to their own. Only on rare occasions does one read an admission of specific wrongdoing by members within the witness organization. One example appeared in the Watchtower of March 15, 1988, on page 17, regarding an elder who committed adultery with a married witness woman. The woman's non-witness husband went to the Kingdom Hall and fired a shotgun at the man and his wife. But it may be noted that long before it appeared in the Watchtower magazine, this matter had already received publicity in the largest circulation newspaper of New York City, and hence was already out in the open. It is hardly an example of openness or candor or humility on the part of an organization to acknowledge something that is already widely known. Not that anyone would rightly expect that an organization should air to the world all the trespasses and wrong acts of its individual members, for that would serve no valid purpose and would be both unkind and harmful. What is wrong is to create an impression of great moral superiority by widely publicizing the failings of those other beliefs, those of other beliefs, 
making it appear that these are common and typical of the membership as a whole, while almost totally suppressing any admission of similar failings on a similar scale within one's own belief system. But are such failings evident on a similar scale within Jehovah's Witnesses? At, oh no, that was where we're ending. <laughs> he has a footnote on page 597, a lengthy footnote about other cases where these extreme situations become well known. He says in another reported case in New York in 1987, a young woman who broke off her romantic relationship with a 27-year-old man later received a package from him containing what looked like a pen but which concealed a spring-out blade that cut her hand when she opened the package. A month later she received another package which she began to open and then realized who it was from. Before she could push it away it exploded causing cuts and breaking her thumb while blowing her 18 month year old 18 month old niece across the room. The 27 year old sender charged with sending an explosive device by mail was described by his employer as a deeply religious Jehovah's Witness. The Chicago Tribune, November 15, 1990, reported a 16 year old's first shooting his father to death in cold blood and then waiting for his mother to return home and murdering her. Friends of the family are quoted as describing them as Jehovah's Witnesses who did everything together. A former neighbor described the boy as a little angel who had been doing door-to-door -door work with his parents since he was a young boy. Unlike the other case, these and similar witness crimes are not reported in any Watchtower publication. And I think since Ray wrote this, there's been a lot of articles and books, even before the Australian Royal Commission stuff about child abuse started to come forth, mm -hmm. about suppression of situations, often it seems by local elders, I, mm -hmm. I don't know if the organization itself necessarily had to even get involved, mm -hmm. but crimes, even murders, yeah. here uh, in I, Ontario. You know, when it's serious crimes like that, you know, it's pretty shocking to, to anybody if in any circumstance no matter where they're from or what their belief system is, when that kind of thing happens, it's pretty shocking. So you can understand in a way they wouldn't want to publicize it, but at the same time, you can't just ignore it and, and, and just exclude it from the, from the, the catalog of, of everybody in your congregation. Well, I think that the, even, even if the organization wasn't so PR conscious as it is and mm -hmm. has been, mm -hmm. even the local elders would tend to suppress. Oh yeah, as, as we did as elders, we we didn't make known to the general population, and certainly didn't favor informing the police of situations that were, to say the least, questionable. And mm -hmm. that was even before this child abuse situation proved. I think that on the local level, yeah. the witnesses, yeah. elders, are going to suppress any in, information that serves to discredit. Yeah. God's holy organization. Now, the, the problem with that is that the focus ends up going away from the wrongdoing and more about your reputation. Yeah. So, so with the child abuse thing, same thing, like people are being harmed and hurt and you're favoring really the, the criminal in order to cover up and keep it quiet. And if it does come out, again you you don't focus on the wrongdoing, you focus on you're being persecuted. Yeah. Because it's being publicized. So this goes right along with the <laughs> characteristic he's already identified here on page 597, that try to find favorable statements about other, other faiths in the Watchtower mm -hmm. literature. Yeah. Well, that goes right along with what we've already identified. <coughs> so I wanted to link on your screen the uh, video we did on why is the Watchtower so eager to forgive and forget itself, mm -hmm. its own mistakes, its yeah. own past, yeah. and that goes along with, of course, its prophetic record, but that, that psychology goes along with suppressing unfavorable information, mm -hmm. information that will serve to discredit the organization, yeah. things that are happening at the local level. Yeah. And this double standard, you don't apply that standard to other faiths. You, you kind of highlight that whereas you keep it covered for yourself. Yeah, and the 
the cliche that is well known in sports, specifically in the martial arts and boxing, the best defense is a good offense. So the watchtower by its continuing to blacken its enemies and apostates, mm -hmm. who of course are the ultimate enemy, blackening all opposition, all rivals, it looks good by comparison, let's face it. And that's mm -hmm. how you, I, I get that feeling right now about the those who have doubts about the organization within, those mm -hmm. who are not not yet faders, but are, are suppressing whatever doubts they have because they tend still to believe, and again, it's their own propaganda that's led them to this conclusion that there's really only one organization that yeah. stands above others, even if it has its faults. Yeah, they'll say, where else can we go? And they they assume that these other organizations, other belief systems, are just full of of insincere people doing terrible things. <laughs> like, that's the impression you've been left with. So when it comes to criticism of the organization, their tendency is shoot the messenger. So we put that video up, too. Mm -hmm. Why is the... Why is the organization so read, ready to forgive and forget its own past? Why is the tendency there to shoot the messenger rather than deal with the message, mm -hmm. deal with the criticism? Let's face it, we all like to feel superior to others. Yeah. And so we're all into denial. Yeah. Next time, uh, more evidence even from headquarters that Ray knew about. The tremendous catalog of, of um, local scandal that the organization did know about and of course that probably was limited by the elders reluctance normally to reveal the uh, the depth of uh, depravity on the local level that the witnesses were have always been prone to but have managed to cover up relatively successfully until recently the mm. records the mm -hmm. catalogs of of sins on uh, that are available at headquarters, or at least were in the old days until mm -hmm. computers became the uh, easy way of getting rid of your past. Mm -hmm. 